Good afternoon, Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. Do we have a spectacular program this afternoon? Intelligent plug loads. What could be more scintillating? <laughs> and to lead us in this discussion is Kevin Howes, the COO, or KU, that's not a bird, of, I wait a minute, bird, IBIS, yes, okay, yes. IBIS uh, Networks of Hawaii. And just very briefly, in my layman's terms, before you get deluged by uh, Kevin, if you looked at the energy use profile of a commercial building, say, just 20 years ago, it would be dominated by lighting and air conditioning. If you had an energy use pie, those would be two huge slices, and then everything other would be this small slice. Well, that pie is looking very, very different today because you've heard me talk about LEDs. The LEDs are shrinking that lighting load down, 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 down while delivering better lighting. And air conditioning is becoming much more efficient. So that part of the pie is shrinking also. But guess what's becoming bigger and bigger and bigger? Plug loads. Go into any typical office and look in the back of desks and you think that it's a bird's nest constructed by a huge bird. All these wires just tangled up all over the place and each one of them is attached to some kind of electronic device and every one of those devices consumes energy. Put that all together, it's called plug load and it's a big, big, big slice of the pie. So let's move right on to Kevin. Good afternoon, Kevin, and afternoon. thanks so much for being here. My first and most relevant question is, the name of your company is IBIS Networks. Now, I associate the IBIS bird with something I see on Egyptian, uh, what do you call it, Hi Hi hieroglyphics. hieroglyphics yeah. So what, where in the world did IBIS come from? Actually, actually the, uh, and the logo is an, an IBIS bird, but mm -hmm. the origin of the name is, is actually from an acronym uh, that we came up with early mm -hmm. on, which is Information Based Savings, or IBS. Mm -hmm. uh, we then kind of turned that into IBIS, uh, mm -hmm. which, which is actually, it's actually, you know, works out pretty well because uh, there are a lot of connotations that come along with the IBIS bird mm -hmm. uh, in ancient uh, Egypt. As, as well as even since then, but really kind of the, the more meaningful part of that is that, you know, it's not just about being able to control the power uh, on and off, it's also about getting a true understanding mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. what's happening with all that plug load, so we yeah. can understand which devices are drawing the most and when, and mm -hmm. then be able to mm -hmm. take action based on that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that brings to mind a phrase that we in the energy business use frequently, if you can't measure it, you can't control it. Right. And I think that's exactly what you're all about. That's exactly right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me, before we launch into the specifics, say that I'm the, or not the, one of the energy efficiency guys for the state of Hawaii. And the reason, one huge reason I love efficiency is we all, you're a very intelligent audience out there. You all know all about the Hawaiian electric demand curve. At six in the morning, demand is very low. It rises, 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 up until around 10, 10 30, kind of levels off. And then these days, suddenly it begins to dip, 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 dip down in the middle of the day. What in the world is happening? We've got 72,000 PV systems, photovoltaic systems out there statewide, and the sun is going strong. They're feeding electricity back into the grid and it's carving this great big chunk out of the middle of the load and that's creating some headaches to put up mildly for Hawaiian Electric. But then Hawaii's peak, strat peak use is between 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. Why is that? Everybody's coming home from school and work and all systems in each home, hundreds of thousands of homes are going full blast. And here's the kicker. We are a tourist dominated society. All the tourists are coming in from the beach, from shopping, whatever. They're taking showers, turning on the TV, and then they're going to all the restaurants and bars and they're all going full blast. Mm -hmm. 
So there's our evening peak. Now, to get back to energy efficiency, <laughs> what I like about energy efficiency is it shaves the load evenly. The, whatever the efficient product is, it follows the existing demand profile, including that evening peak. So the more efficient equipment you have out there, the lower that peak is going to go. And as soon as we can really, what's called, shave that peak, we can begin to talk about shutting down some more of uh, Hawaiian Electric's uh, power plants. Mm -hmm. So, because there's, well, I won't go into the details of that. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, why don't we go to the next slide and look at plug load challenge. Well, I, actually, I covered some of this, but uh, go ahead. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, and, and as you mentioned, lights and air conditioning, uh, you know, HVAC is mm -hmm. more commonly known, do still account for about two-thirds of a building's energy use. But what a lot of people don't realize is that all of that accumulated, mm -hmm. aggregated plug load uh, basically can account for up to 40% of the rest of that. So very, very significant. And while, uh, to your point, there's been a lot of work in optimizing HVAC, there's been a lot of ongoing work with LEDs and other mechanisms to help with lighting, virtually nothing has been done with plug load. For most building engineers and owners, it's just a black hole. They know it's a huge part of their energy use, but don't know anything more about it. And so that's where we come into play. We have uh, tools that bring the Internet of Things principles to energy management, and we've shown that we can uh, it save up to 40%, or even some cases above 40% of the electricity usage on managed devices in commercial buildings. Now, before you go on, I hear the Internet of Things all over the place. Are you maybe one of the few people in the universe who can clearly describe what the Internet of Things is? <laughs> <laughs> well, without trying to make it too broad, es essentially what that means mm. is that all of these various sensors that, you know, for example, ours put around and, and sit between the, uh, the devices and the wall, all of those sensors have real-time data and communicate using internet protocols up to, in our case, a cloud-based system. Mm -hmm. And so I can go in from any browser on my phone or tablet or computer from anywhere in the world and be able to see real-time data of what's happening in my system as well as then exert control, turn things on and off or set algorithms or schedules to manage it. But the key point there is that because we're using, you know, internet principles, essentially all of these little devices almost mm -hmm. are like little computers all communicating mm -hmm. to each other mm -hmm. and to the internet and to the cloud. So mm -hmm. thus the internet of things. Well, I, that brings to mind a kind of humorous story. We were having a presentation by a national fellow in a similar business. And he said, he was trying to explain this, and he said, <laughs> for instance, I think he was from Seattle. Mm -hmm. and he said, let's see what my dog is doing. And he pushed a couple buttons, and there was a camera in his home, hmm, not there, and, and then there's a living room, and bad doggy, you're on the couch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you're not sure, but you want to run that uh, demo live. But uh, that's, that's exactly right, though. And mm -hmm. so, so we're applying it in a slightly different way. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that you hear a lot about with the Internet of Things lately is about some of the security risks, as mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. a lot of these kind of sensors and networks are fairly open and or easily hacked. And mm -hmm. so that's one of the key differentiating points that, that we bring with our system mm -hmm. is security. Mm -hmm. This was mm -hmm. developed originally for military applications, uh, and uh, so uh, we yeah. propri uh, apply proprietary algorithms and encryption uh, to avoid some of those issues. Uh, yes. Such, You're probably not too worried about somebody being able to, to log in and see what's going on with your dog, but <laughs> uh, you'd be very worried about people being able to somehow hack in and turn things on and off. So yeah, that, that or, or you have secure proprietary information in there. You know, it, it's unique to your own company. Yep, yeah. <clears throat> exactly, yeah. exactly. And mm -hmm. so I think that that's, that's one of the, the areas in Internet of Things that's going to continue to be a focus area for companies is ensuring that, that level of security mm -hmm. and being able to, to address that, as well as scale, which is the other big issue. It's one thing to be able to look at one camera or, mm -hmm. or turn on and off one device in your house or maybe even two or three. 
Uh, but what we've tried to do is approach it as a commercial building and say, well, what if I've got tens of thousands mm -hmm. of these devices, monitors, printers, copiers? How can I manage that in a way yes. that makes yeah. sense? Yeah, it, it's mind-boggling to a, a non-techie. -te such, such as myself, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. so that's a big part of our system is addressing mm -hmm. just that. Yeah, so, oh, we're on the next slide now. Plug load opportunity. Yeah, so and, and I think it, this? Yeah. what a lot of people may or may not realize, most office buildings are actually empty two-thirds of the time mm -hmm. with nights and, and weekends, and mm -hmm. yet a lot of these devices stay running, either in full power mode or often in sleep mode. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's called vampire or phantom load mm -hmm. as, as these mm -hmm. devices continue to use a little bit of power. Uh, copiers, for example, or printers will stay on and somewhat warm even in sleep mode. Mm -hmm. Or water coolers that keep the water hot and cold 24-7 mm -hmm. whether mm -hmm. anyone's around or not. So by just by turning these devices off when nobody's in the office, uh, then turning them back on before the first person comes back in, you can save significant amounts of money mm -hmm. uh, just based on that. And then we could apply other types of strategies too, to the point about uh, having real-time data. And you, you said if you can't measure it, uh, you, you know, you, you can't, can't manage it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. But if once I have real-time data, I can understand which devices are more or less efficient, which devices are becoming less and less efficient over time. So I know when it's time to repair or replace them. Mm -hmm. And I can enforce user behavior policies. So if mm -hmm. I tell people to turn things off at the end of the day, mm -hmm. I can go in and check and see mm -hmm. if they've actually turned them off or not. And all of those strategies taken together, we can accomplish significant savings. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to not just that peak shaving, but also if you think about overall state goals for moving towards renewable energy, yep. It's not just about generation, it's also about cutting consumption. Absolutely, so we can go a yeah. long way towards uh, cutting that. So when you mentioned everybody goes home at five, six o'clock, well, if I can cut a lot of the power in the commercial buildings, I can mm -hmm. offset what they're yeah. turning on at home. Mm -hmm. And then let's say, I think we're in a building that's 32 stories high here, and a whole lot of people go home at 4.35, 5.30, but some people are still staying. Mm -hmm. So how can you, how do you manage, you, you manage floor by floor, office by office? We or? can, we actually can manage all the way down to the individual device. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. depending on your office, your company, your department, your individual person, I can adjust those schedules to meet their work hours with, and as well, we also have an override so that if you need to stay late, you come in on the weekends, God forbid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very easy to restore power to anything you need. And so we make sure that we can accommodate the actual real world situations mm -hmm. of offices. And I, I would point out that every one of these devices, no matter how slow, are producing some kind of heat. Mm -hmm. The more you have them on, <clears throat> the less heat produced, the less your AC load, and if you go into an office on the weekend, there's no AC, you're more comfortable because the temperature is lower because there's not all of these devices all over the place that are producing heat. That's, that's absolutely right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well on that very, very cheery note, we already <laughs> have to take a break. Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green, back in a minute. Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard. I'm the host of Center Stage, which is on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock here on Think Tech. On Center Stage, I talk with artists about not only what they do and how they do it, but the meat of the conversation for me is why they do it, why we go through this. A lot of us are not making our livings doing this, and a lot of us would do this with our last dying breath if we had that choice. And that's what I love to talk to people about. I hope you enjoy watching it, and I hope you get inspired because there's an artist inside you, too. Join us on Center Stage at 2 o'clock on Wednesdays. Bye. Hey, Style Energy Man here. Make sure you tune in on my lunch hour every Friday from noon until 1230 at least. Maybe I'll go a little long if you got good stuff to, to share with you. But we'll talk about energy, all kinds of energy. My favorite is hydrogen. And my favorite, other favorite is transportation and hydrogen. But we'll talk about all kinds of energy. Be with us every Friday at noon. Stand Energy Man. Aloha. Good afternoon again. Howard Wig, Code Green, Think Tech Hawaii. My guest, Kevin Howes of IBIS Networks. We're just beginning to get into the nitty-gritty 
of how you control that big, big, big segment of energy use in a commercial building. So if we could bring up the next slide, how it works, system overview. So why don't you take it away, Kevin? Sure, and I, I mentioned before that we've got uh, these sensors or what we call kind of IntelliSockets that we plug in uh, all around an office. Uh, actually, I've got a couple of samples here on, on the desk. Uh, they're very small and we have, uh, we accomplished so various kind of uh, sizes, so for various mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, voltages and amperages we can accommodate them. These happen to be our two kind of low power 110 volt uh, kind of devices for your basic office equipment. Mm -hmm. And we plug these devices in, they communicate uh, kind of with each other and pass real time data mm -hmm. through. Uh, a proprietary kind of firmware over Zigbee, which is kind of the radio frequency we use, so it doesn't impact your Wi-Fi networks, and then through a small, essentially, router up to the cloud. Then I can log in from any browser-based system and understand, see what's going on in real time, run reports, run analytics, set schedules, mm -hmm. and manage not just the devices, but also the power to the devices, essentially turning things on and off uh, when, when they're not used and or being able to run analytics, as I mentioned, so that if devices are starting to become less efficient or look like they're behaving erratically, I can send mm -hmm. somebody to check on them. So that helps extend device health and life Absolutely. Uh, so I can get much more out of the equipment I have. Mm -hmm. Now, say uh, this building hired you to to control energy in all 32 floors or whatever, how would you do that? Would you start on floor two and wander around and look at all the devices and then go up to floor three and then up to four? How, how does that work? Yeah, we would, yeah. We would work with the, uh, this is a multi-tenant building, so we mm -hmm. would work with the different tenants to understand the equipment that they have, which equipment is more or less likely to be candidates for a device mm -hmm, like this. Mm -hmm. There's really not much benefit to putting this on a pencil sharpener mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. something that's, that's very, very low power. So we would go through, understand the kinds of equipment that is either mission critical, that they really want to be watching, mm -hmm, and or mm -hmm. that we could affect either by understanding the data or through schedules and then and the voltages and um, amperages that we would need. Mm -hmm. Then come back, do install it, very, very easy to install, plug it in, uh, and then We'd establish a baseline, see kind of what the energy use is happening in real time, and then work with the tenant, work with the building owners to establish whether it be schedules or other tools to optimize that energy use so that they can get more out of the equipment while still saving energy. Mm -hmm. And if I were a smart building manager, I would get every tenant to cooperate with this by saying, you are individually metered. Well, no, individual, it, it varies, doesn't it? It, it varies. Yeah. It varies a lot yeah, by yeah, building. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm, in a multi-tenant mm -hmm. building, uh, the electricity is typically included as part of the lease, so yeah. it's, it's a yeah, set yeah. amount. So we're still working with building owners and managers to figure mm -hmm. out what types of incentive programs yeah. can be put yeah. into place. Uh, as a great example, there's buildings even in downtown Honolulu where you've got a law office, which may be two or three guys in their laptops, not using mm -hmm. very much energy at all. In another floor, you may have a laboratory or something with a lot of heavy equipment mm -hmm. or a printer that's using a lot of energy. So working with the building owners and the tenants to find ways to better incentivize and reward uh, tenants that are more energy efficient. Yeah, I'm, I'm the energy codes guy, and I put into the new codes the fact that all tenants over a 1,000 square feet, including living units, shall be individually metered and that, that metering data shall be accessible mm -hmm. by, uh, by the individual tenant. And, and we have actually found mm -hmm. that user behavior can change significantly mm -hmm. just by exposing mm -hmm. that information to the mm -hmm. users. Mm -hmm. Before you even like go and market or tell yeah. them or create policies around it, just by letting them know how much energy that refrigerator or that space heater or whatever is using, mm -hmm. you can impact their behavior just because nobody wants to be wasteful. Yeah. that most cases are just not aware of how much energy these mm -hmm, things actually mm -hmm. use. Okay, well, we don't have all that much time. What, what do we have for another slide here? Well, I, I think Whoops. what would be useful, yeah, is uh, very quickly we can talk about where we are. Uh, we are um, Honolulu-based. We're a spin-out of a local engineering company called uh, Oceanet. And mm -hmm. we have actually, you know, advanced the technology. We're in our third generation of the hardware and the software. 
Uh, because it's important for commercial buildings, we integrate with building management systems uh, over something called BACnet, which is just a, a industry term. And we've been uh, demonstrating this in commercial pilots uh, across Hawaii and mainland and even overseas some. Uh, we're on a couple military bases with pilots. We've been doing a lot of work with schools, including uh, the UH system and uh, the Department of Education. We're in a number of uh, public schools here, uh, which we're very excited about, and of course, commercial buildings. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and with that, I don't know if it's the next slide, but I thought what would be fun is to, to show just a little bit of data from one of our installations uh, at the University of Hawaii. And I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this, but essentially UH has a very significant uh, energy usage profile and a rough, roughly about $40 million or so of energy uh, use Can a you year. tell us what the peaks and the valleys are? Because we can't read the, uh, the bottom Absolutely. line. Absolutely. Yeah. So the graph in the middle is essentially a, a typical week uh, of at UH Manoa. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And you see the peaks there are your weekdays. You see kind of, you know, uh, a couple of days there and then mm -hmm. uh, weekends where it's not quite as high. But I think it's what I like to point about, out about this slide is that those valleys, the, the overnight, um, middle of the night when you think that energy use would be at its lowest, mm -hmm. it is, but it's still literally 50% of the peak. Yeah, that, the, the bottom part, that solid is called the base load, and that is one heck of a base load. Exactly, yeah. and that also represents a lot of opportunity for savings. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's where being able to apply some of these strategies we talked about can make a huge difference. And as I mentioned, we've been able to show by applying various strategies, we can save over 40% mm -hmm. of energy use on managed devices, which equates, if you look at the entire electricity bill, to about 10%. So very significant, especially if you've got a $40 million bill. Wow. And is that 40 million just for Manoa campus or is that the entire university system? No, I believe that's uh, the Manoa campus. Mm -hmm. And do you uh, incorporate, can you incorporate uh, AC, HVAC into this or that's, that's a totally separate we, we, issue? That's really a separate issue. Most, mm -hmm. uh, most large buildings have central air conditioning which mm -hmm. is managed through different types of systems. Mm -hmm. But where we can apply this is for smaller uh, window air conditioners or in some cases split systems. Mm -hmm. So for example with the heat abatement program that the DOE is putting mm -hmm. into place mm -hmm. uh, a lot of that's going to be portable and window air conditioners some of which are going to be PV AC um, mm -hmm. photovoltaic mm -hmm. but still have a plug load component uh, for cloudy days and so we can still provide a lot of benefit in those types of systems and we're really excited to work with the DOE to sure. help them understand kind of real world use what these air conditioners are actually going to be using and then help optimize that. Yeah, yeah, I'm so glad you're doing that because you know there's hot kids, hot kids, nobody wants hot sweaty kids <laughs> or, or teachers for that matter. But if all of those thousands of classrooms were air conditioned, there was no way on God's green earth that DOE could pay the electricity bill. So you in working with them are hopefully going to be able to offset we can offset a, a big part of that, and mm -hmm. we can make sure, as an example, that they get turned off. You know, mm -hmm. despite best intentions, you know, a lot of times air conditioners or space heaters or whatnot get left on at the end mm -hmm. of the day. But if they run overnight or over a weekend, yes, it can yes. add up very quickly. And across 12,000 classrooms in the state, mm -hmm. uh, it adds up. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we can absolutely make sure that, that they're turned off as well as provide real world data, which, which brands of the air conditioners are more or less efficient. Mm -hmm. And what's the actual energy load that it's putting on the school so that uh, the school and HECO can appropriately provision the, the school to make sure that their air seas are running but not over provisioning and wasting money in that mm -hmm. regard as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be so important and I'm so glad you're working with them and with the uh, University of Hawaii, their AC bill is uh, it's significant yeah, as, 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 as well, a, least, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, I know we're you know, a little bit short on time, but we can also do some other really interesting things, such as mm -hmm. uh, you know, HECO's moving towards a demand response program. I, I have demand response right on my oh, notes here. there good, you go. Good, 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 yeah. Uh, well, we found we did actually a pilot program with uh, hotels, and hotels mm -hmm. typically don't like to do demand response because they need to be on 24-7 mm -hmm. to service mm -hmm. the guests. But if you go in and you can selectively choose devices, mm -hmm. such as the ice machines or some of the vending machines mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, to participate, then it's fine. 
not, yeah. not a problem. And if you think about all the ice machines and all the floors and all the hotels in Waikiki, mm -hmm. by turning them off when you hit that 5 p.m. peak, mm -hmm. you can make a very significant difference. Yep. So yep. from a grid perspective, it, it's a really mm -hmm. interesting proposition. You might uh, clarify for our guests what in the heck is demand response. And I might say that Hawaiian Electric is looking really, really closely at demand response. And in, in my humble opinion, it's going to be one of the major ways that they're going to be able to reduce energy. So, so what is That's demand exactly response? right. Yeah. So, so demand response is essentially, if you think about the electricity provisioning, you've mm -hmm. got the generation and the supply side, but then you've got the demand side as well. Mm -hmm. And so the, it's always difficult to balance those and make sure that they're essentially about equal. So if your demand spikes and you can't bring up your supply fast enough, you end up with brownouts or other issues. Mm -hmm. So there's a technology that's in place, and there are a few different approaches to it, that essentially can dynamically go in, sense that that imbalance is happening, and selectively turn off certain demand side appliances. So mm -hmm. we mentioned ice makers and things with, with hotels, but uh, generally speaking, it tends to be more like uh, commercial businesses that uh, have industrial lines that they can bring down mm -hmm. uh, on, on a fast response for 15, 20 minutes until the supply can catch up. And I should uh, mention that the Hawaiian Electric just doesn't go in and intrude, they enter into agreement yes, absolutely. With, with these clients. Yes, yeah. these clients are, are, are do buy in, and in fact, uh, Hawaiian Electric, you know, or most utilities actually pay them to be part of this, this program, mm -hmm. so there is a reward mm -hmm. for them to participate. Yeah, yeah. And any uh, wrap-up notions here? I think we ran out of our slides. Oh, okay, here's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've kind of already visited that. I think that if, if there's, there's a takeaway uh, is that, you know, really when it comes down to thinking about, you know, Hawaii's goals and what we're trying to achieve from uh, energy dependence, it, demand side and what's going on with the conservation and energy efficiency needs to be absolutely a part of that discussion. Mm -hmm. And it's not just around HVAC and lighting. Now we've got you know new tools such, mm -hmm. such as ours that can go in and help address even some of the other devices that are around the office. Absolutely. Th this would have been inconceivable 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. There, there were uh, energy management systems, but they were complex, and they the operator had to know how to do it. And uh, and they and they yeah. still are. There's still a lot of those systems, but yeah. we're trying to simplify that yeah. as as much as as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're absolutely right. Even even five or ten years ago, uh, this would have been just a matter of concept. But now we yeah. can see it uh, applied in in real world, and we're actually seeing the, the results. Yep. And with my. My mandate is HCEI, Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, 100% clean energy electricity by 2045. This is going to be a major contributor to that. And on that cheery note, we have to close Kevin Howe's IBIS Networks. Thank you very much. Thank you, Howard. Enjoyed being here. Thank you.